Hello, everyone, and welcome to the D Hard House podcast. My name is Alicia. You can find me on Ravelry as Aliddy Knits 2 and on Instagram as Read Knit Run. Today is Saturday, May 18th of 2019, and this is episode 62. If you're a new viewer to the podcast, thank you so much for joining. I'm so glad that you found this channel. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and for subscribing. So my co-host Marjorie just laid down on the floor next to me. I'm assuming she's going to stay there for a while. We did just come back from a (laughs) W-A-L-K... So she's a little tired out, which is perfect. So it's been two weeks since my last yarn confession known as my podcast where I get on and I talk to you guys about all of my crafts. (laughs) So we are back in the craft room today. Uh, It's Saturday evening. I usually record during the day, but I got a lot of sewing done today, which I will share at some point in this episode. (laughs) So, um, just a real quick review. Um, last time I talked to you guys, it was the beginning of the month and the semester, the spring semester was wrapping up. So that is finished. Uh, we had graduation and, um, wow, the spring semester's over. Like, Wow. (laughs) So, uh, I am on summer break now and I'm going to be teaching this summer. So it's not like I'll have the whole summer off, but Hey, these few weeks have been really nice staying at home, um, doing things around the house. So I've been, you know, doing a lot of chores and also a lot of crafting and TV watching and relaxing, which is nice. So, um, I mentioned that it might be a couple weeks before this episode came out, and the reason being that uh, my husband and I were planning on going camping. We did not end up going camping uh, because it rained everywhere. Like, (laughs) um, even during the graduation ceremony, uh, it was stormy outside, so... (laughs) Uh, So we did not go camping anywhere, uh, everywhere that we were interested in going. It was going to be bad weather, so we just stayed home. Uh, And then we were going to go camping this weekend, and uh, that didn't work out either. (laughs) And then next weekend, I am going to be vending my sewing projects and crochet projects uh, at a craft fair. So hopefully the next weekend we'll go camping. Uh, well, the next weekend my dad is having surgery, so probably not. So bad weather, family stuff, work stuff, crap. We'll, we will go at some point. It's just, darn it, we were hoping to go some this month. Anyway, Um, so I am wearing a finished object. I believe I showed this to you guys last time. It is now blocked. Uh, fair warning. Here is Marjorie looking at the window. Um, yes, I'm talking about you. She likes to hunt the flies that are in our house. And I don't know, I'm going to blame it on the wet weather that we've been having. Um, I am currently in West Texas. We are going to be moving at the end of the summer, but we are still in West Texas. And it is not usually wet here. It is usually very dry, very windy uh, climate. And we have gotten a lot of rain over the past, what, two months? Um, So I don't know what's going on, but it's really nice because everyone's grass is green and it's amazing. However, downside bugs. So we've had a lot more bugs to deal with than we have other springs. So anyway, she is chasing the flies around. um, And they're, of course, very attracted to the light in the window. So 
I apologize in advance if that becomes a distraction or disturbance during this episode. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what was I talking about before that? Oh yes, my shawl. So I believe I showed this to you guys finished last time. Uh, it has now been blocked. All the ends are woven in. I was going to go take pictures today in the park, but we had a tornado watch. Yeah, okay, just a watch. But still, um, I got really terrible sleep last night. I do remember rolling over and seeing flickering lights outside of the bedroom window. And I thought, oh my gosh, our outside light is on the fritz. And then realized it was lightning. And I realized it was lightning because there was thunder. <laughs> so I got crappy sleep because it was storming. And... I was way too tired to just fully wake up, so I think what happened is I tossed and turned a lot. Regardless, I still woke up pretty early because I'm an early riser, and I asked the dots around the house, I won't say her name because she'll turn on, um, the weather. I asked her the weather in the morning, and she had mentioned we were in a tornado watch, and I said I probably shouldn't go to the park to take pictures. <laughs> And I wanted to do it in the morning when the light is more cooperative, especially for the spot where I want to take pictures. Uh, so by the time the tornado watch was over, it was sunny, cloudless, hot, insane. Uh, and after it just raining, I didn't want to go slosh through the fields. So <laughs> tomorrow I'm hoping that Michael will come with me to the park and we can take pretty pictures so that I can finally release this pattern. So long story, I'm trying to release this pattern, but I need pretty pictures to put in the pattern. So that is almost always the holdup on me releasing a pattern is taking photos. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. I'm not a photographer. And it's also really hard to take photos of yourself when you're trying to take like nice shots of the scenery as well. So anyway, I'm hoping, yes, I know you want to get at the window over there. Um, anyway, I'm hoping the weather cooperates and that Michael will be uh, willing to come help me. So, But I found a beautiful spot in the park and I really hope that that works out. So anyway, uh, so let me show you the shawl. Uh, so here we go. It is later in the day, so I apologize for the lighting, uh, but I use two skeins of yarn in uh, two different colors. So one skein of each color. I did use the full skein of each. So this requires two full skeins of yarn. Uh, the solid purple is Cascade Heritage in the color number 5633, if I remember correctly. And the speckle color is from, oh, there's light behind me, so it's kind of shining through. This beautiful speckle is from Lucky 13 Fibers, and the colorway is called Gray Purple Speckle. Or Purple Gray. I think it's Gray Purple. Anyway. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so it's a nice big triangle shawl. It has since been blocked and I just love it. Love it. There was a fly over here, sweetie. Why didn't you get it? Kill all the flies for me. Yes. Okay. So this pattern is not out yet, but I hope... Did she get it? I hope. I think it flew away from her. Yeah, I can hear it. He's hiding now, sweetheart. I hope to have this out very soon. I am working very hard on it. <laughs> I, but I'm not going to go take pictures during a tornado watch. 
So for other finished objects, okay, I guess not other, my first finished object to show you guys, like for real finished object in the last two weeks are the socks for my husband. So uh, last time I uh, had started the second sock. So this is knit out of some of my hand dyed yarn. So this is D Hard House Creations uh, self striping yarn on the over the river colorway, uh, which was one of my self striping Christmas co Christmas colors. Uh, anyway, so I did a uh, two by two ribbing on the leg and then decided to carry down the 2x2 two two ribbing on the top of the foot uh, just so they're a nice snug fit. I did a short row heel and look at how that worked out. So this is not an afterthought heel. Um, this was knit top down and I just went with it uh, as I was knitting the sock. And I just love how that turned out. The placement is amazing. So I purposefully started these two socks at different places. So I started this one on the light brown and this one on the light blue. So this was the first sock. This was the second. And so I purposefully offset them uh, so that when they're off by just one stripe, it looks like I tried to make the match and failed. So <laughs> if I offset them on purpose, then it to me looks better. So that's what I did. And the heels are amazing. I love the dark patch right in the middle. I love that that dark color runs down the middle of the heel and that the color before the heel was the color directly after the heel. So it just looks like one big brown stripe here and one big blue stripe here. And I just think that looks so cool. So yeah, interesting little thing uh, that happened. So when it happened on the first sock, I really wanted it to happen on the second sock. So I did try really hard to get that. Um, this right here totally depends on the cell striping yarn that you're using. So yeah, but I think it looks really, really cool. So these are finished. Um, so I told you guys about the yarn. It is a fingering weight yarn. It's a 75% merino, 25% nylon. Um, like I said, dyed by me, self-striping colorway. Um, I did use 64 stitches on a US size one needle. And uh, like I said, I knit this cuff down, which is my favorite because I use the twisted German cast on, which is a it's a type of long tail cast on that adds an extra twist to it so that your bind, your bind off, your cast on is very stretchy. Um, I have a problem with my bind offs being way too tight for socks. And so then I can't even put them on, which is a problem. So I like to knit them cut down because I can make a stretchy cast on. But I have a hard time with a stretchy bind off. Anyway, I will make sure to link uh, the tutorial video for the Twisted German Cast On that I uh, learned from uh, for those of you who might be interested. So I did some spinning. I did a lot of spinning. And I love it. I love it so much. Okay, so I have a traditional Ashford wheel and I purchased this used from a flea market. I found a listing online on Facebook from a group that's all about selling used um, fiber tools and equipment. And uh, I drove quite a distance to go purchase this at a really good bargain. <laughs> so um, it does have a little bit of, like you can tell that it wasn't fully maintained right before I bought it. So whoever had it right before me just didn't know what to do with it. And so it sat there. So um, 
I'm still learning, so I'm also learning about spinning wheel maintenance in the process. <laughs> I'm watching lots of videos, um, and it's been really fun. Anyway, so total caveat here, disclaimer at the beginning, I am a brand new spinner. So please don't judge me too harshly. I am learning and I'm happy to share my experiences with you. So, um, so I spun, I was trying to spin like a fingering weight yarn on my spinning wheel because I knit a lot with fingering weight yarn. Um, now I did have some challenges at the beginning where I was putting too much twist in it and the yarn would break. Not enough twist in it and the yarn would break. I was having trouble with drafting. I was having trouble with plying. I was having all kinds of trouble, but you never know until you try and you practice. So I'm learning from it. So anyway, I spun up the rest of my practice fiber. <laughs> so the first fiber I ever purchased was uh, four ounces of Malabrigo Noob, which is 100% Merino, and it was in the Piedras colorway. Gorgeous stuff. What is she doing? Okay, so fly drama. <laughs> anyway, so I started spinning on a top whorl drop spindle and there's fiber all kinds of stuck to this uh so i had purchased a fully wooden uh drop spindle in a starter kit uh but that drop spindle is kind of heavy and so it was very hard to spin thin yarn on it so i made myself one that's much lighter i used a dowel and some polymer clay and made this silly flower design on top and painted it and whatever, okay? So I was spinning on this and I spun a whole bunch of it on here and then it sat and it sat and it sat and it sat. And uh, last year I bought myself a Turkish drop spindle and the lady I bought it from, Jerry Brock of Jerry Brock Woodworks, showed me how to do a um, chain ply on the Turkish drop spindle. She didn't show me specifically. She was doing a nice tutorial video. But anyway, video, tutorial demonstration. Anyway, so I took all of that yarn off from here, the single that I spun, and I used my Turkish drop spindle to chain ply it. This was before I had the spinning wheel. And I got this. Now, I knit a swatch, so this is what's left after knitting the swatch, but it is a three ply. It is a three ply yarn, chain ply. It's pretty good. Like, you know, I mean, it looks like yarn. It doesn't look like crap. And this is the first thing I spun, you guys, and it doesn't look like crap. And when I knit it up, It doesn't look like crap. Oh my gosh. Look at how amazing this looks. Okay. So again, this is Malabrigo Noob in the Piedras colorway. Chain ply. So it keeps the colors together, right? Oh, this looks so pretty. Okay. It is gorgeous. Now you don't see lots of blips in there and whatever. Like it looks pretty even. Oh. It looks so good. Okay, not to toot my own horn or anything, but that, that looks pretty dang good. So this was drop spindle. So again, I spun the singles on a top whorl drop spindle, and then I used a Turkish drop spindle to chain plot. Okay, so fully drop spindle. I do find that with a drop spindle, I have a lot more control than when I'm on the spinning wheel. So that being said, I went from something like this to something like this. Okay, so uh, here I did not chain ply, I did a two ply. So I spun up two separate bobbins of singles and then plied them together.
I'm going to blame the lighting. Anyway, um, so it's not as perfect. So definitely, like, definitely the colors are different, right? Because I did not chain ply it. Okay. So other than the color, though, you can see that this yarn is not as even and not as, um, not as thin. So this is, I would say this would be more of a, between a sport and a worsted, um, kind of thing. And then this definitely, I'd say I got fingering. Anyway, so, um, so yeah, I knit up these swatches to see which I liked, the chain ply or the two ply. And I liked the way the two ply looked. Um, just because it split up the colors more, it, it, you know, muted the colors. Uh, I really liked the look of it. And, um... I wouldn't have to do the drop spindle stuff. So anyway, um, so I split up the rest of the fiber. So I had done all of this. I still have a lot left on the, um, which is going to be cool to work with later. Uh, so I'd done a bunch on the drop spindle and I, of course, forgot to weigh it. So I don't know how much is left here, even after the swatch. Um, so then... You know, I did this to play around with my spinning wheel, and I was like, yeah, well, it's, I'm not the best spinner on the spinning wheel, am I? I mean, there are definitely places where the yarn is, like, really wiry. And you're probably not going to be able to see this on the camera. Nope, definitely not. Okay. So, um, yeah, there's definitely thick and thin spots, um, places where the ply did not go well. <laughs> And so I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to get better unless I practice. So what I did is I kept breaking off parts of the fiber, the braid, and um, splitting it and going ahead and, and spinning up two bobbins and plying them together. And I just kept doing it in sections. I wasn't really weighing it or measuring it or doing any of that. Just let's practice using the wheel. Let's practice spinning. Let's practice plying and doing all that stuff. Meanwhile, I'm watching videos on Blueprint about spinning and plying to learn from some experts as well as my own wheel and my own mistakes and things. And you guys, okay, so let me just show you. I knit a real quick boomerang shawl out of the stuff that I spun. Yeah, it's not very big because, you know, it, this isn't a full four ounces, but... I'm so happy. So at this end, I decided to do it in order. Um, I started off with what was left over from the ball that I knit this swatch out of, which was a very small amount. So perhaps you can see it's not the most even yarn. It's got thick and thin places. This is in garter stitch, by the way, which kind of exaggerates the thick and thin stuff. Um, then <laughs> this section got kind of stripey because I took a somewhat small section of the braid. So I took this section of the braid, let's say, I split it down the middle and I spun those in that order, that same order on their bobbins and then plied them together. So essentially I got sort of a chain ply effect in that it kept the colors together because they got plied on themselves. So there's this one section here where it's kind of stripey. Uh, I did not intend for that to happen, but that's what happened. So then on the next section, I <laughs> tried to split it up more so I wouldn't get that stripey effect, uh, which worked out pretty well. You can see I definitely still have thick and thin uh, going on here. And then this last section, oh my gosh, you guys, this last section is incredible. Look at this. It, it looks so good. Okay, I'm going to have to put in like a separate video or something because my lighting is so awful right now. But this looks pretty dang good. This is in the span. 
you guys, of two days. This is two days. This is, I'm brand new to spinning and I don't know what I'm doing on my wheel, all the way to, holy crap, I believe that I could spin yarn to knit a sweater. I love it. Okay, so I'll probably not like wear this thing because it's so tiny. I'll probably just keep it in the craft room. Um, like hanging up on the wall or something just to remind me of overcoming challenges and learning something new and that I'm just really proud of myself for doing it so um, yeah so all of that fiber is gone now I have spun the whole thing up from this braid so Malabrigo Noob in the colorway Piedras which I purchased like three or four years ago so <laughs> um, yeah super stoked about this. What? All right. So when I was at DFW Fiber Fest last month in Irving, Texas, uh, one of my friends bought a drum carter. I did not buy a drum carter, you guys. I bought some hand carters. Yeah. Not at the festival. I ordered these off from Etsy. So, uh, my friend had showed us these roll eggs she made on a blending board and it was really cool and she was having so much fun spinning it that I was like, I really want some roll eggs too now. So I went on Etsy and I looked around for hand carters. I looked on Amazon. I looked on eBay. I looked on Etsy, looked all over the place and this was the best deal. So, on Etsy, Howard Brush Company, okay, sells, they called these seconds, as in there's something wrong with them. But I don't know what. And that's what most of the reviews said, honestly. I looked around and there were lots of comments that said, I know these are on sale because they're seconds, but I can't find anything wrong with them. So I was like, ooh, this sounds good. So I bought some. <laughs> um, and I haven't used them yet, but I'm really excited to. So they are flat. They are not the curved style. I've never used hand cards before. I've watched many videos now. <laughs> uh, but I'm really excited really excited so the next project I have in mind I have a braid of fiber over there that I've had for a while another one I've had for a while and it's all mushed and matted down and everything so I want to use the hand cards I want to get some air into that fiber I want to get it all spread out um, and make some little Rolex to spin some nice woolen more woolen style yarn um, and I'm really excited about that. Mm -hmm. So part of the problem that I had with my spinning on the wheel was that I wasn't really pre, excuse me. I wasn't really pre-drafting the fiber. So it had gotten matted down and everything in storage and it was really hard to draft while I was spinning. So I had to keep stopping and drafting and I'd spin a little bit. I have to stop and draft and then spin a little bit. And it got really annoying. So I was like, screw this whole pre-drafting thing. Let's just go, baby, go. And it turns out pre-drafting is really nice. So anyway, so I'm going to try these out and I'm really excited. The shipping was fast. Like I got these things within, I don't know, four days of ordering them. So incredible. Um, they look amazing. Like I said, I haven't tried them yet. So I will keep you posted. <laughs> so as far as knitting finished things, uh, that's it. Uh, so I finished knitting that shawl out of hand spun. Like I said, I'm so happy about it. So, um, because I finished Michael's socks, I had to cast on another pair of socks because now walking on the treadmill without knitting socks is weird. So, 
duh. So I cast on another pair of shorty socks for myself. So I am knitting up. This is another self-striping yarn. This is from Patton's Croy. It's still focused on me. Well, <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is out of Patton's Croy. Um, now I'm trying to remember the name of this yarn. I've used this yarn before. Um, blue, blue stripes, um, jazzy blue stripes. I don't remember. <laughs> anyway, I've used it before to knit a pair of socks for myself, oddly enough. Uh, but this time I'm going to make shorty socks. So, uh, cuff down my favorite. I did 10 rounds of 2x2 two two ribbing. I am now 5 rounds into the stockinette. And I can tell you all this because I have to count this while I'm on the treadmill. <laughs> yes. So, um, so I'm knitting this while on the treadmill. I think, excuse me, I think I'm going to do a contrasting heel. So the last time I used this yarn, I did a contrasting heel as well. I used um, a yarn that had no nylon in it, so it felted. Yeah. Um, so I will not do that again. <laughs> but um, so last time I used a lime green color. Uh, this time I want to do something different. So I'm not sure if I want to do um, red and make it really patriotic. I have a yarn that's really similar to this gray right here in my stash. I might do that. Um, orange. I haven't decided. I have five rounds to go until I have to decide what I'm going to do for the heel. So <laughs> I'll have to make that decision. But anyway, um, yeah, so this has been a couple walks on the treadmill. Um, usually what I do is I walk about half a mile as a warm-up before I go on a run and it's just really nice to uh I'll watch a, a podcast or a tv show while knitting and walking <laughs> and I get all warmed up I stretch I have a little bit of a snack and then I go out for my run and it's been a really good uh morning routine so I'm really happy with it Anyway, so I've just started. These are on USI Zero, I believe. Yep, USI Zero. These are on Chow Goo Needles, which are my absolute favorite. Absolute favorite. I love my Chow Goos. Um, the join is impeccable, and I love the cord. The cord has metal in it, and it is coated with plastic. And... I love these things. I hate the fully plastic cords. I do not like them. So these, I love. The plastic coated metal, amazing. Love it. Can't say enough good things about it. So since I'm knitting these on a size zero, guess how many stitches I have, you guys? 64. Because we've talked about this. I cannot do a size zero with 60 stitches because then it won't fit. <laughs> so I have 64 stitches on a US size zero. It's going to fit just fine. I have an oldie, but a goodie to show you. Uh, this is one of my sweater size bags in some Mario fabric, which is awesome. Uh, so this is a sweater for Michael. I'm going to attempt to pull this blob out of the bag. Okay. Oh my gosh, you guys. It is a blob. So. Okay, so this thing is in the worst part because it has the most stitches. So, um, magnetized wristband. Love it, but it sticks to all my stitch markers. So anyway, um, this is the Ranger by Jared Flood, which is a nice uh, men's cardigan. I knit this same pattern for my dad uh, last year. Earlier this... Yeah, last year, right? I don't even remember. Yes, it was last year. 
So I'm knitting it again, this time for my husband. And uh, so it's a bottom up pattern and you start by knitting the sleeves, then you knit the body, then you join them together and decrease on the yoke and that's where I am. So this thing has, I don't want to know how many stitches on the needle and I'm in the slow decrease section. Yeah. So anyway, this is taking forever, but, um, I'm trying, I'm trying you guys like really hard. I'm trying. So I posted a picture of this on Facebook and said that I was in the slog of the sweater and, uh, someone commented and she said, yeah, I made that same pattern. Um, and yes, it felt like a dog in my lap. And I have to agree. It feels like I have a dog in my lap. The thing is so hard to turn as I move the stitches around the needle. It's just, I just need to get past this part, but this part is taking forever. And I'm also really worried that I'm going to run out of yarn. So I had to wind up another skein and, uh, I had to start a new skein at the join of the sleeves and the body and this is how much I have left and I only have one more skein on the shelf so fingers crossed that I will not have to do an emergency order of an extra skein um, yeah cuz after I finish the yoke I still have to do the collar and the button band so yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, so it's really hard to see because it's in the, it's in the biggest part of the sweater. It's, you know, it's right here. So, you know, we're above the armpit, right? here. So it's in the widest part of the sweater. It has the most stitches. It's really hard to spread out. It's really cumbersome to work with. I love the pattern. It's just not every pattern can be exciting all of the time and happy-go-lucky. So this is at a spot where it's not happy-go-lucky. So I just have to keep going and get through it. So the yarn that I'm using, this is a worsted weight yarn for a worsted weight pattern. This is from uh, Cloudborn. Cloudborn Fibers Highland Worsted in the Charcoal Heather colorway. So I ordered this off of Craftsy.com. And so it's a worsted weight yarn. It's 100% wool, 100% fine highland wool. So um, Michael's getting a wool sweater, like a proper wool sweater. And it's really exciting. I'm just, uh, yeah. So I've pulled it out of, you know, the languishing whip section of the craft room. It is now in the proper works in progress part of the craft room, i.e. it sits on the couch. <laughs> and when I sit down on the cough to have, on the cough, when I sit down on the couch to have my coffee in the morning, I'll do a round or at least or a row, at least one row. Once I do a row, I usually end up doing a couple more. And it's, it's actually not so bad in the morning before I've fully woken up. Um, because it's in the slow decrease section. So I do a decrease row and then there's rest rows. So it's not super exciting, which is good in the morning. So yeah, it's, um, I just want it done. I just want it done. I want it off the needles and done. And I want to see Michael wearing it when we're camping in the mountains. It's going to be amazing. I just, need to keep going. So during the boredom of the this section of the ranger cardigan, I decided it would be exciting to cast on another sweater for myself. <laughs> yeah, I said I didn't want to do it. I said don't cast on another one until you finish it. So what happened is, okay, I started Michael's sweater. And as I'm working on a sweater for him, I'm like, oh, I would like a sweater too. So I cast one on for me. And I was bouncing back and forth between the two projects. Of course, I finished mine first. It's sitting over here on the shelf. 
His is still being worked on. While working on his sweater, I'm like, oh, I would like another one for myself. So I cast on another one. Yeah, because I'm a really good wife. Whatever. Okay. So, um, please forgive the black and white photos. Uh, perhaps I will put in a nice color photo because this pattern relies on color. So I have cast on Radiate by Hohi Locatelli. See, black and white does it no justice. So I will put in a nice color photo here from Ravelry. So Hohi Locatelli, I have not knit any of her patterns. I have a bunch of my library, but I have not actually knit any of them. So I'm really excited to finally knit a Hohi pattern. She is amazing. So um, I am not doing bright pink. Um, I'm just not ready for it. So I'm doing bright orange and it looks way neon on the camera. Um, it is not this orange in person. So, anyway, so, yes, I, I have done a bit. I have done a bit because this is more exciting than that thing over there. That big gray blob. Okay. <sighs> Whatever. Whatever. So, you guys, I knit a little swatch. Yes, I knit a swatch. I'm getting better about this. And I'm not totally against swatches. So, um, this is a DK weight sweater pattern. So, I'm using some DK weight yarn. And I wasn't sure which gray I wanted to pair the orange with. So, I knit up quite a few of them. And I really wanted to use this light one. It almost looks white, but it's not. It's like a super light gray. And I just love how it looks with the orange. That is not what I'm using. Because I went to the store, I brought this swatch with me, and they don't carry this color anymore. It really sucks. So I got this color down here. So I didn't want to do the tonal um, color. I wanted to keep it solid with solid. So I'm doing this gray down here. Which is still looking, it's looking pretty nice. Let's be honest. Okay, so um, I use the suggested needle size in the pattern to knit this swatch, and my gauge was spot on. Stitches and rows. That has never happened to me before. Never. So I'm really excited that that worked out first time. Um, so I'm not in the stockinette section yet, um, but yeah. So this is, this is acrylic yarn. I have a lot of acrylic yarn in my stash and I did buy a lot of it with sweaters in mind. So I'm using up my stash and there's nothing wrong with acrylic sweaters. In fact, it makes me much more comfortable um, wearing those things out camping and stuff because it's a, you know, $40 sweater instead of a $140 sweater. <laughs> Anyway, so, um, yeah, I'm excited. I am really excited. So I am still in the yoke section of the sweater. Um, a lot of stitches, but because it's top down, I don't have the whole body sitting on my lap, which is nice. Um, anyway, this has been really enjoyable. The pattern is really well written so far. Uh, however, I still have not mastered the wrap and turn, so I am still working on that. <laughs> um, there is a wrap and turn I did where there is definitely like a hole. Yeah, you see, can you see that hole there? Uh, yeah, that's from a wrap and turn. So I still need to work on that but um hopefully that'll block out when i just move everything around maybe anyway um other than that you guys there's nothing wrong with the pattern and the way it's written or anything like that so i'm excited i'm 
yeah, I'm excited. So I'm I'm a bad wife. I cast on a sweater for myself before finishing my husband's, um, but I will finish his before I finish mine. I'm making that promise today, right now, to you. Yeah. So the yarn is, um, let's see if I have the tags. Well, I have some of them. Uh, so it is Baby Bee. Carrots Oh No is the orange color. Yep. So it is DK Weight Yarn. Um, so because it's sold as baby yarn, you know, it comes in the, the lighter, softer pastel colors and stuff. Um, I'm not a pastel person, so bright orange, bring it on. Uh, so Carrots Oh No is the orange, and then Flannel is the gray colorway. And I think that's what this tag is. Sure is. Flannel. There we go. So the lighter color that I wanted, I don't know what that colorway is called because I lost the ball band. I had used some of it in a project at some point. And um, when you buy the yarn like this and you take this ball band off, it's really hard to put back on without tearing it, which is what always happens to me. So I did lose the ball band on that lighter color. Um, my husband did suggest going on to... Um, Amazon or other craft store websites and seeing if I could find it somewhere else and I wanted to but I couldn't remember the colorway name and because many grays look alike on computer screens wasn't even sure I was going to get the right one so that's fine I went with flannel instead because it was in the store and it was on sale and so I bought it and there we go this is going to end up being a $12 sweater See? Acrylic's not so bad, you guys. $12 sweater. And a hokey sweater. All right. Uh, so I'm knitting these on USI 6, I believe. USI 6 Chowgo needles. Um, I picked these needles up at DFW Fiberfest because I didn't have any of the larger sizes. But I love Chowgo needles. So yeah, USI 6 needles, just like the pattern calls for. Um, DK weight yarn, just like the pattern calls for. And I am knitting the, I think it's the third size. It is the third size for the 38 inch bust. She does say it is recommended that you choose a size with two inches of positive ease. However, had I gone up a size, then I would have had four inches of positive ease. And I did a find last time. So with the last two sweaters that I've made, when I went with the 38 inch bust size, it fit really well and was not like super tight or anything like that. Uh, and when I did go up the next size, the sweater looked kind of baggy on me. So I'm going with the 38 inch bust size and hopefully that will work out just like last time with a different pattern, <laughs> but the same yarn. So hopefully it'll work out just fine. I think it will. Okay, you guys, it's time to show you what I've been sewing and what I'm going to take with me to the craft fair next weekend. So... I have a shop on Etsy called D Hard House Creations where I sell handmade bags and hand dyed yarn. I'll also show you some yarn in a little bit, but first the bags. So I was playing around with a new bag design and came up with something that I absolutely love and I'm calling these the clear top bags for obvious reasons. <laughs> so I have some yarn in here just so you can see um, this a little bit better. Um, yeah. So I am using an outdoor fabric on the outside here. So this is a nice uh, water resistant, easy to clean, wipe down fabric. Same thing, same type of material where you would buy like a an outdoor 
seat cushion or outdoor pillow or something like that same kind of fabric so it's super durable super sturdy gonna handle um all kinds of things and then the clear vinyl is up here on the top so you've got your zipper clear top so you can see what's inside which is super handy i'll take the yarn out i just put two balls in here that match the fabric the clear vinyl lines the entire inside of the bag. So the whole thing in here is lined with this vinyl, which means you don't have to use this for yarn. You could put fiber in here and it's not going to stick because this is all vinyl. It's not going to, it's not like a cotton bag where the fiber is going to stick to the cotton. Nope, all vinyl in there. So you could use this for spinning. You could put lotion in here. You could put shampoo in here. You could put toothbrush in here. It's clear vinyl. It's not going to stain. You just wipe it up. The moisture or whatever spilled or whatever. It's not going to stain. And it's going to clean up very easy. Now, you cannot put this in the washing machine because it is clear vinyl. But with the easy wipe up, you don't have to. So, you guys. I love this so much much so much so I love the clear in that you can see what's inside I also love that the way I worked it up the clear lines the entire inside so you don't just have to use these for your knitting projects you can use them for travel you can put your makeup in here It's just so cool. So, um, so I've got this style here where it looks like, um, it looks like burlap. It's got that print on it, but it's that nice outdoor fabric right there. I've got a whole bin full of these things because it's amazing. All right. Ah. So we've got some stripes. Uh, this fabric is really cool. Again, it's an outdoor fabric. Okay, so it's, I don't know if you can hear that. Um, it's really sturdy. So um, from blue into green, I think that's pretty cool. Again, zipper. I need to add um, some more charms. So I've got like a little charm zipper pull. And I'm going to add little charm zipper pulls to each of these bags. So that comes with it. Okay. Um, they'll all be a little bit different. Have a little character. So I've got blue stripes. So this is listed on Etsy. I also have some with birds on them. So it's got a nice red background and some colorful birds. Now, the placement of the fabric might be a little bit different depending on the bag, but uh, these are really fun. And we've got leaves, green leaves. Yep. Um, so those are all posted on Etsy. I've got one in this flannel print. I've got some solid blue, navy blue. So if you were getting this for, uh, you know, a gentleman, like I said, it's not a knitting specific bag. These can be great for travel. Um, put your um, shaving cream in here and a razor and toothbrush and all that crap <laughs> can go in here, deodorant. Um, I imagine Michael and I will take some of these that are left over from the craft show and call them ours and take camping with us. Um, and then the, the burlap print kind of thing. So I have more fabric um, that I'm going to be using to make even more in the next few days leading up to the craft show. So um, you guys, these are so cool. So um, as you can see, this bag here is holding two, ooh, hit yourself in the face. So this bag is holding two full skeins of yarn. Um, 
big box store yarn uh, in here very comfortably. I took a picture on and posted it on Etsy on the D Heart House account, uh, and I had three skeins of fingering weight yarn in there. Um, so this is great for a shawl project um, or your travel stuff. Anyway, I need to do more marketing on the travel stuff because I just think that's so cool. So yeah, I've posted some of these in the shop on Etsy. So if you're wanting to snag some of these before I hopefully sell them all <laughs> at the craft fair, um, they are listed in the Etsy shop. Um, and uh, I'll keep posting things as I make them. I also have some new colorways that I dyed up. Caveat, the lighting is kind of terrible um, this late in the evening, but um, I did post a nice picture on Instagram, so do check that out if you get the chance. Uh, so I'm really feeling the summer vibes, so I decided to dye up some summer colorways, so I have some bright, vibrant things. So this one is totally speckled with all kinds of bright colors so blue green pink purple um orange yellow a little bit of gray like it's all in there and the green is that great kelly green that's just super bright so this one is called party time and uh here it is on a mini skein you can also get it on a full skein so this is on my classic base which is the only base i carry right now which is 75% uh, merino, 25% nylon. Um, and I just can't wait to use this in a brioche project because what? That's going to be amazing. And then I was thinking about 4th of July and fireworks. So this colorway is called fireworks. So half the skein is black a tonal black and the other half is red white and blue so um, it's going to micro stripe if you're knitting um, socks or any like small circumference tube um, so you're gonna get some nice micro striping uh, and it's gonna look like the black uh, dark sky with your red white and blue um, fireworks so that one is really cool and was super fun to dye up and then the last one is probably my favorite of the three so this one is a nice light teal with some little pops of yellow and gray uh, and this one I'm calling poolside. So it just reminds me of sitting by the pool, you know, the chlorine pool, <laughs> and my nephew swimming all day long if he could. Me dipping, dipping in and floating a little bit. Um, but it just makes me think of sitting next to the pool, drinking a margarita, just chilling out. So I'd add up this mini skein, completely fell in love. So I'd add up a full skein right away. Mm -hmm. So here you can see it on the mini and the full skein. So I did leave a little bit of white in there, you know, because as the water is like splashing and all that good stuff. Anyway, so this one's called Poolside and I couldn't be more happy with it. Um, I'm really excited to use this. So. Yep, so we've got Poolside party time and fireworks up in the shop so you can get those on a mini skein or a full skein and mm -hmm. so poolside with the blue stripes bag yeah right right Okay, it's got to happen. It just has to. That's amazing. Okay, I saw that the other day and I was like, what? They match. So, yeah, this with a nice dark, like a 
dark teal or a dark green in this pattern. Okay, if I made kits with this pattern, two colors of yarn, and a coordinating bag, what do you guys think? Bag, yarn, pattern. If you're interested, comment below. I'd love to hear if you're interested. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. Anyway, poolside, amazing, beautiful, love it. Okay. All right, and then I just remembered I did make some more stuffies. So um, I've been sewing a lot, so I haven't been crocheting that much, but I did make a mini polar bear. Yep, polar bear. And I figured out the fox. Yep, I figured out the fox. I need to make more of these little bears. So, um, this fox, you guys, took me like three days. Because the fox was really hard to figure out. But I love him. So he's got his scarf on, but if I take this scarf off, look at that head shaping on that fox. I know, right? I know. Okay. So he's adorable. He's my little foxy. So, um, so I made this guy and, oh my gosh, the ears. Before I put the ears on, I wasn't sure it was going to work out, but then I put the ears on and it was perfect. Uh, so then I decided to make an arctic fox so we could have um, an arctic fox and a polar bear. Okay, so arctic fox. So cute. And then, since I was making mini bears, I had to figure out how to make a mini fox. So there we go, mini fox. So he's just a tad smaller, and Marjorie's barking, so I'm gonna have to wrap this up. But he's a tad smaller than the others. Um, his ears are built into the head, so they're not separate. I just did some stitching to make it look like he had. Um, anyway, you guys, these are so much fun. So, so I made four. So it's been two weeks. So I made four stuffies. I finished a pair of socks. I did a whole bunch of spinning and I knit a shawl out of it. I made a bunch of progress on Michael's sweater. I made a bunch of progress on a new sweater I cast on for myself. And I sewed all of those bags. And I dyed yarn. It's been a good couple of weeks. Like I said, I've been home. It's been really nice. So... I'm so glad I was able to squeeze this in <laughs> and get this episode recorded. So, um, yes, next weekend is the craft fair. So I will take pictures and video and let you guys know how that goes. The craft fair is on Saturday, May 25th. Um, so, uh, again, I don't know when I will get the next episode out to you, but hopefully not too long after the craft fair. Uh, so, yeah. Until then. Oh, quickly with running. I've been running outside in the morning and it has been glorious. Absolutely glorious. Gorgeous weather. Um, I could do without some of the wind. But this is a windy area. It's going to happen. Uh, I just don't like running into the wind during my last mile. It's not my favorite, but it's been happening a lot. Even when I switch up my route and run it the other way, I'm still running into the wind in the last mile. Um, it's like it knows. So anyway, um, that is that. I'm still running. I'm still knitting, crocheting, spinning, sewing, dyeing yarn, all the things. So again, uh, you can follow me on Instagram, my personal account. I am reading it run on Instagram. You can follow the shop. 
on Instagram. The shop's account is dhardhouse on Instagram. Uh, you can find all of my things for sale in the D Hard House Creations shop on Etsy, linked down below for your convenience. Uh, and you can follow me on Ravelry to see my project pages for things that I'm working on. Uh, my username on Ravelry is Knits 2 So, yeah. Guys. It's late. It's like 7.30 p.m. It is still sunlight outside. <laughs> this is messing up my sleep schedule. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to go let Marjorie in and edit this episode. And I will see you guys sometime next week. So I hope you have a very crafty week. And I will see you next time in episode 63.